Hey guys, how's it going? I hope everybody's doing well out there today. In this video, we're going to be taking a bit of a step back and talking about why you might want to get into self-hosting if you haven't already. Now look, I know self-hosting isn't for everyone, but it does have a lot of advantages. Also, just so you know, this is only one half of a pair of videos in which we're gonna cover the pros and cons of self-hosting. The other video will be linked in the video description. Also, these are both going to be kind of talking head style videos, so feel free to minimize this screen and keep doing whatever else you're doing while I give my thoughts on the pros and cons of self-hosting. Also, do me a favor and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. So the first question here is what is self-hosting? hosting. So let's talk about that for a minute. Basically, self-hosting is the practice of running applications and services on your own hardware. This means that you have complete control over your data and your environment. You can choose which applications to run, how to configure them, and when to update them. So self-hosting is also sometimes called home labbing, and it's a great way to learn new areas of IT or information technology. And I often, when I'm doing my research, find different ways to solve an issue that I might be having. And oftentimes exploring each of these different options gives me different ideas on how I might approach different issues in the future. Now you may also consider exploring self-hosting to help learn new skills like Docker or Proxmox if you're not already familiar with them. And these skills often look great on a resume when applying to different tech companies. And I've had countless people tell me that learning the skills that I share on this channel have helped them move forward in their existing careers as well. So of course, the question here is why should you self host? And there are many reasons why you might want to self host applications for yourself. And here are a few of the most common. So the first reason is privacy and security. So when you self host, your data is stored and processed on your own hardware. Now that does come with a, a bit of a con here. And that means that you're going to be responsible for the security of your network, hardware, and software. Now that said, this also means that you have complete control over who has access to your data and how that data is used. You also don't have to worry about third party vendors tracking your activity or selling your data. Now, of course, there are some caveats to that and some apps are designed to share information uh, that's anonymized. For instance, Portainer asks if you want to share anonymous data to help them continue to develop the platform. But always be sure to read the terms of the application before you install it. Another reason that you might consider self-hosting is customization. Basically what that means is when you self-host, you can customize your applications and your services to meet your specific needs. You can choose which features to enable and how to configure them, and again, when to update them. And this is especially useful for people who have specialized needs or want to use applications in a way that wasn't originally supported by the vendor. Now this may be more or less difficult to do depending on your needs and the features available in each application. Now, another reason that you might want to get into self-hosting is for performance. And what I mean by that is when you self-host, you can choose hardware that is specifically tailored to the needs of your application, whether that's a certain amount of CPU cores or RAM or storage or whatever the case is. And this can lead to significant performance improvements, especially for applications that are resource intensive. Now, this next point is a bit of a mixed bag, kind of a gray area, but I wanted to throw it in just in case. And that happens to be cost. Now, in the long run, self-hosting can be more cost effective than using third-party vendors. And this is because you don't have to pay a monthly subscription fee for certain applications. However, it is important to factor in the cost of the hardware and the electricity and that sort of thing when you're making your decisions on if you wanna self-host and what you wanna self-host. Now to tie one more little thing into that, chances are you've already got internet and power, right? So why would I bring this up? Well, the reason is that um, your hardware may draw additional power that you obviously weren't using before. So your power bill may go up a bit depending on the hardware you're using. Also, if you're accessing your applications and that sort of thing from outside your network, and you got say a, a data cap on your internet service provider, that may be an issue as well. So that's definitely something to consider. So if you're interested in getting started in self-hosting, there are a few things that you'll need to do. Of course, the first one is you'll want to choose your applications and there are a wide variety of self-hosted applications available. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know I've made videos on hundreds of them. Now, with that said, you can choose applications for productivity, entertainment, and so, so much more. And again, let's throw out a few examples of some different types of applications you would run on your setup. 
Yep. Nope. So again, let's talk, nope. So again, let's give some examples of some things that you might do with your self-hosting setup, like hosting multiple websites or blogs, running a media server like Plex or Jellyfin. You might, like I've done, host your own password manager. You might also consider running a home automation server so that way you can control your smart devices in your home or you might run a development environment for building websites or applications. Of course, next one is choosing the hardware for your setup. You'll want to choose hardware that is powerful enough to run the applications you want to host and hopefully have at least a little bit of overhead associated with that. Basically what I mean is it should run all of the applications you want to run and still have a little bit more power behind it just in case you decide to add more stuff later so you've got a little bit of excess left over. You'll also need to consider the amount of storage space that you'll need and the type of networking you want to use. Luckily, getting into self-hosting can be relatively inexpensive if you're comfortable with deploying refurbished or secondhand hardware from places like Facebook Marketplace or eBay. Of course, next, you'll want to choose a virtualization platform. And a virtualization platform allows you to run multiple applications on the same hardware. And this is a good way to maximize your resources while still isolating your applications from each other. Some popular virtualization platforms for self-hosting include Docker, Proxmox, VMware, ESXi, uh, Hyper-V, uh, and, and there are plenty of others, but those are just kind of the more common ones. So once you pick your hardware and the applications that you'd like to at least start with, you'll need to set those up and configure them. Now this process can vary depending on the application, and this may be done via a simple install script provided by the application developer, or it may be a Docker container version of an application that can be deployed via command line or a Docker compose file, or via a graphical user interface like Portainer. So after we've gotten everything set up the way we want it and things are working, there are other maintenance things to consider like backup and update strategies. There are a number of ways to handle both of those and you can often create a solution that works for you, whether that's automated or being done manually. So with all of that said, self-hosting is a great way to take control of your data and make your life a little bit easier. It offers a number of advantages, including privacy and security, customization, performance, and possibly even some cost savings. And if you're already familiar with services like Docker and Proxmox, then self-hosting is a great option for you. So if you're not already familiar with services like Docker and Proxmox and that sort of thing, there are lots of resources online, like this channel right here, that can help you familiarize yourself with the setup process and any number of different setups and get into self hosting. So this is in no way an exhaustive list of why you might want to get into self-hosting. But I hope this video has given you a better understanding of why you might want to consider getting into self-hosting your own applications at home. Now, of course, if you have any questions or want to add something that I've missed, please leave them in the comment section down below. So I think with all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I do want to thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.